Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to synchronize data with the server. It's quite easy for one to synchronize your offline database with the one on the server. Remember that we've already created a communication profile to reach MIS Communicator for our online table. That means we can use it also to synchronize our offline data. I'm going to create a button for that. In our menu, I'm going to create a button and call it Sync On. And I'm going to set its text to Synchronize online. The action we need is called synchronize. For now, let's focus in the online synchronization. This type of synchronization is very straightforward. Calypso will connect to MIS Communicator through the specified communication profile and will get online with the server. Notice only TCP IP communication profiles are displayed and supported for this option. Once he connects successfully, he will start by sending all the collected data from the offline database of all the tables defined in tab to PC. Afterwards, Calypso retrieves the data from the server from all the tables defined in the tab to PDA. Once the data transfer is completed, the connection is closed. Let's check out which tables are defined to be sent to the server, so to PC, and there's none. This means we need to go to each table we want to send to the server and specify that it can be sent to the server. Before we do that, let's just check which ones are defined to be retrieved from the server, and you can see all are checked to be received from the server. So let's save, save, and let's go to the table products, which is the one we are editing. Even before that, we can simply arrange here the button. And now the tables, the product table, and as you can see, we need to check the 2PC box. Once we save the changes, Calypso automatically prompts us to add the table to the define it synchronized actions. Let's say yes. If we now check out our synchronized action, tab to PC, we can see that the table is already there and it's checked to be sent. So let's try our project. Let me close this. Products. For instance, we have carrots here, and let's check out how it is on the server's database. So on the server, that record is still unchanged. Let's now exit and synchronize. Let's check the server again. Let's refresh. And as you can see, the record was updated. We can even try and do a double test. For instance, let's edit peanuts to something random. Let's go to our application products, let's put back carrots to its correct name, save, we can still see that peanut is still the old value, exit, synchronize again, product, and we can see that penis, peanuts was updated, and on the server carrots was again updated. So carrots was sent to the server and peanuts was sent 
to the mobile device, in this case, the simulator. There's a second type of data synchronization available in Calypso. This method is an easy, as easy to set up as the one we've just seen. So I'm going to duplicate our synchronize button, rearrange the interface, So I'm going to shorten these descriptions so they can all fit. I'm going to give it the name that we're going to use. And now let's open the synchronize action. The biggest difference is that the online synchronization mode connects directly to the server's database. On the other hand, the one that we are going to see, file transfer with kdriver synchronization, implies the transfer of text files, and the mobile device never reaches the database directly. So the process starts by dumping into a Calypso formatted text file all the data that has to be sent to the server. Then Calypso contacts MIS Communicator through the selected communication profile. In this case, we can use not only TCP IP communication profiles, but also Bluetooth and local and serial profiles. He sends through that profile the produced file. MIS Communicator, after receiving the file, calls KDriver the Calypso component responsible to process the file into the server's database. Once that's done, the same K driver gets all the data from the server and puts it into a new text file. After that, MS Communicator sends the new file back to the mobile device and shuts down the communication. At the moment, the mobile device processes the received file into the local database. Although this method has much more steps than the one we've just seen, it's actually faster for big amounts of data because all the database access is done at the server level instead of the mobile device. To set it up, we just choose File Transfer with KDriver Synchronization and save it. You've already renamed the button, so let's save. In this case, another step is necessary we need to make sure that MIS Communicator is set up to call KDriver. We can do that by calling the MIS Communicator from the designer. This launch button runs MIS Communicator. Stop it if it's running. Press the Products button and look for the KC36 product code entry. If you are using another version of Calypso, you should look for the KC and your version Open the product entry and check the path parameter. It has to be set to a folder on the machine. This folder will hold the transferred files. After that, we need to check the Application 1 tab. In the Application list, you must enter the call to KDriver as seen here. The 2PC underscore 2PDA parameter tells the driver to process the file to the database, and then the database to the file. They can also be used separately. For instance, you can call the driver only with the 2PC parameter to only process data into the database. Once you check all of this, you can try your project. So I'm going to cancel, cancel, exit, exit, and test the project. So I'm going to log in, and again, I'm going to produce some changes. In this case, peanuts, edit, and put it back to what it should, save, exit, and synchronize, but in this case, with KDriver.
if we now check the server's database, you can see the record was updated on the server. We've seen that this method uses a folder to hold the transferred data, which we define in MIS Communicator. We've seen that this method uses a folder to hold the transferred data, which we've defined in MIS Communicator. Let's open that folder. So we can go back to the designer, open MIS Communicator. We can copy the path and now open it. And you can see a substructure of folders, each one corresponding to a mobile device. Although it's not mandatory, you can identify each device with a unique number between 1 and 9999. A folder will be automatically created here for that device number. If you open one of that, those folders, for instance, for device number 1, you can see yet another substructure of folders. One holds the received files to PC, the other holds the files to be sent to the mobile device. To PDA. Even if all the devices are defined as number one, Calypso understands that if two of them try to connect at the same time, they are two different devices and puts them on hold until he finishes the current one. Therefore, the data safety is always guaranteed. If you want to set the terminal ID, you can do it directly in your application. So, in our project, I'm going to create a new form and call it config. I'm going to add an input and call it terminal ID and set its type also to terminal ID. Now we need an exit button so I can copy one of these. And finally, in the closing of the form, we'll set the terminal to the value specified in the input. So set terminal ID, not to one, but to the value on the input. Let's drag this form to our menu to create an access to it. So I can simply drag form config I'm going to set it as config and as you can see it has the show form so save and now I'm going to test in the mobile device so Windows next I'm going to pull up my mobile device screen. Here comes the application and let's log in. Config and as you can see by default the device is set as number one. If we synchronize and let me open MIS Communicator you can see that MS Communicator tells us that terminal number one was connected. Now we can go to the config, change it to number three, for instance, and synchronize. Let me just stop it so we can see the refreshment. synchronize again and as you can see now it tells me it's number three the reason we didn't see it before it's because the connection was already open so the connection wasn't reinitiated so it was still displaying terminal number one also if we check out our synchronization folder and try to synchronize now with K driver You can see terminal number three 
folder was created. So the last thing you need to know is that K-driver synchronization, it's not exactly a file synchronization. It's actually a folder synchronization. Remember the 2PC and 2PDA folders? Well, check out the mobile device. Let's open Calypso folder and see that it also has the 2PC and 2PDA folders. Actually, all the files existing in folder 2PC will be sent to the server, and all the files existing in 2PDA will be sent to the mobile device. That's why, if you look carefully to the synchronize action with KDriver, you'll see the if project received parameter. Since this is a folder synchronization, it's possible for you to send an application update among all the files. In that case, Calypso needs to know what to do with it. You can tell to Calypso to either don't update the project, repair the project, or replace the project. If you say don't update the project, the file is kept and nothing happens. If you say repair the project, all the data is kept and the project gets updated even if there's a database structure change. Even in those cases, Calypso has the ability to keep all the data, update not only the project but also the database, and then restore the data. If you select Replace Project, Calypso deletes the entire project before installing the new version. On the next tutorial, we'll discuss on how to update the project in runtime. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial about data synchronization.